welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another full day of eating aka what I eat in a day as a vegan full day of me eating food and a few more things um, here is my cat first of all <laughs> and there he is <laughs> today I will show you everything that I eat from my breakfast to my dinner slash supper I never know how to call this very late dinner meal so you will see everything that I eat today and I will tell you my best nine tips on how to go vegan they are super helpful I will give you real solutions real ideas on how you can go vegan right now stick to your vegan diet and go vegan not only in your diet but also in your mindset in your philosophy in your lifestyle and I will tell you everything that you can do right here right now so I will start with the first one right now before I go and do any of the work that I have planned for today. Educate yourself. Oh, I cannot stress that enough. If you are considering going vegan, if you are curious about veganism, about the vegan diet, educate yourself. Know what you need to know. If you're watching this video right now, you're probably already curious about veganism. Look, there are so many videos, but more importantly, there are so many documentaries and there are so many books about all of the aspects of veganism. Watch Cowspiracy for the environmental reasons. Watch The Game Changers, Forks Over Knives, and Uprooting the Leading Causes of Death for Health Reasons. Watch Lucent, Dominion, Earthlings, The Land of Hope and Glory for the ethics. Don't skip any of them because veganism is a whole. So if you are vegan for the environment, it's also very, very important for you to know what animals go through. If you are vegan for the animals, it's also very important to know how it will affect your body positively and how eating animal products impacts your body negatively. So it's all connected. All of the links for these documentaries are always in the description of every single one of my videos. Educate yourself because it will give you a foundation for building your vegan diet and your vegan lifestyle long term so it's very very important don't skip that educate yourself don't skip that it's more important than any other tip that i will give you today but i still have eight more so educate yourself is the first one and now i'm going to go and work i'll come back with some more with some of my food that i'm going to be eating today because this is a full day of eating vlog if you are new here i make videos about veganism minimalism learning traveling lifestyle design and all it's all. <laughs> so if you're interested in any of those areas, please subscribe to my channel, click the bell. All right, I've done some work now and I am going to tell you my tip number two. Um, it's about knowing your strengths and it's super important when you go vegan to know as much as you can about veganism, but also as much as you can about yourself. And it's important to know first your strengths, so your strong points. It means that if you know that for you it's very, very easy to cut out meat from your diet, this is your strong point. If you know that you can live without a certain animal product in the beginning, that is awesome. Build your new habits around that. So for instance, if you know that you can live without meat, just go online and search how you can replace meat in your diet. So learn, for instance, how much of lentils, chickpeas, tofu, uh, tempeh is an equivalent of the portion of meat that you used to eat. So this is going to be your strong point because if you know that it's very, very easy for you and you have so many alternatives ready for you and you can just pick and choose whatever you want to eat right now, it is going to be something that will build your momentum when it comes to building new habits around new products and new recipes that will be your starting point. If, for instance, your strong point is eggs, excellent! <laughs> if it is about the eggs, try to find recipes that use eggs that are not really... Um, you cannot really taste them there. For instance, pancakes. I couldn't ever taste any eggs in pancakes. So if you know that eggs are fine, you can live without them, just try to find as many alternatives to eggs so that you know that, okay, it's so easy for me if you know that you can live right now without a given animal product just replace it everywhere in every single meal that you eat and that will be your base and your confidence when it comes to eating vegan will be boosted as well because you will see how easy it is for you to just eat vegan and 
eat normal. <laughs> so that is my tip number two. And tip number three, before I go back to work and before I show you my brunch, um, is know your weaknesses. It's just as important as knowing your strengths. So you know your strengths, you know what you can live without, but what is something that you cannot imagine living without? What is one or maybe some more animal products that you eat right now that are just impossible for you to cut out from your diet because they are just so delicious or you've been eating them for so long and they are just a part of you. And if you stop eating them, what, what, what would happen to you? It may sound silly, but oh, I know that was a huge deal for me. I will tell you why later, but when it comes to weaknesses, if you know, for instance, that you cannot live without milk chocolate, that's okay. I mean, you will go vegan eventually, but if it's something that really, really bothers you right now, for instance, just having this favorite brand of chocolate and it's not vegan, but you would like to eat an alternative version uh, of that chocolate, here is what you can do. Because I know it took me ages <laughs> to find the perfect vegan chocolate for me. Here is what you can do about it. Step one, when the craving kicks in, remember your reasons why you want to do this. If you really want to eat that piece of chocolate, if you really want to eat that yogurt, if you really want to go out and eat this delicious non-vegan spaghetti or ravioli or whatever, remember your reasons. Why are you doing this? Are you doing it for the animals? Because if you eat it, they will still get hurt. Are you doing it for the environment? Because if you are doing it for the environment, the planet will still be polluted. If you buy this product, there will be still demand for it. And if there is demand for it, people will produce it. And when people produce it, the environment is hurt and animals are killed. So remember your reasons. It's very important to always go back to either the animals or the environment because the third reason is our health. And we are very often self-destructive and we think like, Ooh, mm, well, it won't kill me, I'll eat it. Well, remember about the other reasons because it's very, very simple. If you eat this product, the environment will still get polluted and if you eat this product, the animals will get hurt and killed as well. So this is one of the techniques and the other one is to go online and go and join vegan groups on Facebook or vegan forums or maybe ask a vegan influencer or someone that you know that is vegan and ask them for this replacement. Just simply write a question. <laughs> like, hey guys, what is the alternative that you recommend to fill in the blank? Like, I don't know, milk, chocolate or whatever and tell them your favorite brand. Chances are they probably found it before you <laughs> because they are already vegan and they went through the same things and they will be more than happy to help you because they are super helpful. Vegans are helpful and they will just share everything that they know and every single product that they have tried and they think you might enjoy. So go online and look for alternatives and know your weaknesses because you want to go vegan. Because you are here, you want to go vegan. But if you do this, if you know your weaknesses and you recognize them and you remember about your reasons and you know alternatives to every single product that you are really attached to, it will get easier. And you'll be able to go vegan and stay vegan and just learn how easy it is when you finally start talking to yourself about veganism. Why is that important to me? Is it worth it? How can I do better? Simply remember your reasons and always, always look for help whenever you feel like you need help. It's very, very helpful and supportive. Okay, back to work. I'll see you guys in a sec. Hello, Liam. Let's get you some Oatly, shall we? Oh yeah, and now we are going to work. So this is my brunch guys. This is a couscous salad with tomatoes, um, cashew nuts, almonds, and some sprinkled basil and salt. And I'll be eating it in just a second, but I wanted to show you this presentation of mine. <laughs> I've done my makeup, as you can see. I have my spoon. I'm going to be eating my brunch 
and I want to tell you about two more tips. So they will be tips number four and five. So the fourth one is buy accordingly. What does that mean? Okay, so you know your strengths, you know your weaknesses, and now you can go to the shop and buy things according to your weaknesses and strengths. So if you don't want to eat meat and you know that it's easy for you, I'm just saying meat, but it could be any animal product. So you can go to the supermarket and buy things that will replace meat in your diet, like legumes or tofu or tempeh, any high protein products, and you can go and buy these things so that when you're at home and you want to cook something, you know that you have these things in your fridge, in your pantry, in your cupboard, you have it available, you have it on hand, you can eat it whenever you want to. And when you know your weaknesses, it's the same thing. You know that your weakness is chocolate, or you know that your weakness is yogurt or cheese, you go to the shop and you buy yourself some vegan yogurt, chocolate or cheese, and you know that you have it at home. It's very important. I heard this quote, it goes like, if you fail to prepare, prepare to fail. So if you fail to prepare yourself for the moments when you don't have anything to eat and you don't know how to cook your favorite meals because you don't have any products that will replace those things like cheese, like vegan cheese or vegan chocolate, then you will probably end up eating something not vegan. And this is not what you want. You want to go vegan, you want to be vegan long term. So go to the supermarket and buy the things that you will eat when you have your strong moments, your moments of strength, when you really want to just eat something vegan and it's super easy for you. And when you have your weaker moments, like you really want to eat something non-vegan and you have nothing in your fridge or your pantry, so you really have to go to the supermarket to buy something and you can't be bothered, you don't want to go there. So be prepared shop according to your strengths and your weaknesses and also you know like buy your regular products that are accidentally vegan like fruit and vegetables but be prepared buy according to your needs your strengths your weaknesses and you will be prepared and it will be easier for you to go vegan and to be vegan and to cook vegan so that is tip number four i really have to eat but how will you know what to cook well tip number five is spend some time researching. This tip is about doing your research when it comes to recipes. Just spend one day or maybe one evening even going online and searching for vegan recipes that will be the best for you. And there are so many recipes out there. I, I'm just blown away by how many vegan recipes there are. Even recipes for the same vegan dish like vegan lasagna. You can make it in so many ways. It's impossible not to make a vegan lasagna these days. Anything and everything can be made vegan these days. So spend some time Googling all of these recipes. In the description box, you will find my personal favorite YouTubers and vegan cooks and websites that I use whenever I look for inspiration for my vegan meals and my plans and recipes because I want to share all of my resources with you guys. So go to the description box and you will find everything that I use, my favorite, favorite, favorite recipes. So if you have favorite recipes or your go-to recipes or recipes that you know you will enjoy, Google them, save them. I don't care where you do this. It could be in bookmarks on your browser. It could be in a separate doc document. It could be in Google Docs. I don't care. Just have it somewhere in one place or in many places. As long as it works for you, save these recipes and try them. <laughs> it's very, very important because so many people want to go vegan and they are like, okay, but what do I cook? Well, if you don't know what to cook, whether it's non-vegan or vegan, the first thing that comes to your mind is to find a recipe for a dish. It's the same. You will be fine and you'll find a recipe for everything, I assure you. And you can use some of those that I um, linked in the description for you guys, but this is so important, it's going to save you so much time, so much effort. I mean, you have to put in the effort first, but you will be so relieved when you realize that you have all of the recipes for all of the dishes that you love in one place, ready for you to use, and you put in the effort, it was worth it. You can be vegan, and oh, <laughs> Max is here. You can be vegan because you are prepared and you know what to cook. So this is super important. 
and a super effective tip as well. Okay, so I have to go back to eating and I have to leave the house and, <laughs> and I will see you later. I really have to eat now. It's very good. I love this part of Roswell whenever I go through here on my way to work, it's like, hmm, so pretty. So, so pretty. Here I am with my, uh, <laughs> with my veggie patties and my rice. I'm gonna pop it in the oven and I will talk to you about um, tip number six. And I just need to put it here. Right, I'm at home, I'm back home, but I have to leave soon, but I'm still in my <laughs> sweatpants because I always change my clothes. Uh, let me know down in the comments, do you do that? When you come back home, uh, and you know you will be leaving, but still you are home. Do you change into your like homey clothes or do you stay in your regular clothes? Today is a mix for me because I left home in this t-shirt. Normally I don't do that, but I changed my pants, my sweatpants. So let me know who does it. Anyway, you're in my kitchen. I don't know if I showed you in my kitchen before, but I want to tell you about tip number six while my dinner, lunch, I never know how to call it, is in the oven. And that is, <laughs> forgot. <laughs> and that is eat enough food. It's not that hard. Um, many people who go vegan at first complain that they are always hungry. <sighs> Where do I start with this? If you eat normally, like an omnivore diet, um, like you don't eat a vegan diet, you may eat things like patties, like meat patties and rice and salad, which is something that I'm going to eat now, which is not going to contain any meat. But some people's first um, action when they go vegan is that they take out any uh, animal products out of their diet, but they don't replace them with anything. And that is such a no-no. Oh my God. You have to know how much you have to eat in a day. Let's say you're like me and you have to eat around 2000 calories, around because I work out and I want to lose weight, so for me it's kind of different. I calculate it differently, but let's say it's 2000 calories. So if you take out some meat, which could be around up to 200 calories, you end up eating less. If you don't replace it with anything that is also around 200 calories, you're going to feel empty, you're going to feel not satisfied, you're going to feel hungry. And that is some people's biggest mistake. And what I recommend that you do as my tip is to know how many calories there are in the animal products that you eat now and then replace them with the amount of plant foods that equals the calories that you take out from your diet. So you take out some calories from your diet, but you also add calories to your diet. I hope that makes sense because if you don't replace this, if you don't add calories, for instance, if you don't add a veggie patty instead of a meat patty, but also if you don't know if that one veggie patty equals the calories that are in a meat patty, then you are going to be hungry and you're going to do your body some disservice. <laughs> it's going to be harmful. So make sure that you eat enough calories. There are plenty of calorie calculators out there. You can calculate how many calories you need, how many calories there are in the animal products that you eat, and how many calories you have to add to your diet to equal the calorie intake. If there's anything that you take from this video, if you're trying a vegan diet, I hope you take this from this video. Just eat enough food. And speaking of which, <laughs> I'm gonna take out my food and I'm going to show it to you guys. Be right back. Max, show me my food, please. Thank you. Okay, this is my lunch. I have two veggie patties, which are made of carrots, couscous, chickpeas, sunflower seeds, and some spices, then brown rice and some kale, tomato, olives, salad. It's very basic. I don't really do side salads, but I was craving kale. I know, I was craving kale. I was craving um, its, um, you know, its health, <laughs> its healthy taste. I was craving a salad like that, so I made it for myself. So this is my lunch and I'm going to eat it now. Oh my God. I ate it yesterday and I left it as part of our meal prep this week and it's 
glorious. I hate that it gets so dark in the winter. The texture of kale, you either hate it or you love it. I love it. Mmm, very good. Very tasty. So I'm going to finish my lunch and then I'm going to go for my mentoring sessions. It's going to be two hours, so two one hour sessions. I'm going to eat my afternoon snack. I'm going to come back home. I'm going to work out, review the video for tomorrow, which is planning my French learning journey for 2020, which you already saw on my channel. Later, I'm going to eat my dinner and I will share my remaining tips with you. And I am going to finish it now because it's got cold <laughs> and I'm super hungry. You gotta finish it now. See you later. Got my coffee, got my hat, ready to go. Let's go. These are my snacks. I was really running out of time and I had to pick something up at the at the store. So I chose date bars. This one is the peanut flavor and this one is the coconut flavor. And I am going to devour them because I am super hungry. I've just finished my mentoring sessions and I'm going home and I'm going to eat it on my way home. So let's go because I'm super hungry. <laughs> if you've ever wondered what it's like to live with me, this is what it's like to live with me. <laughs> All right, I am making us dinner. By us, I mean me and my boyfriend. And I am making something with udon noodles. And I want to share my final tips with you guys. Um, tip number seven is to follow vegan influencer and activist accounts on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, follow them. I mean, truly, it was the reason why I went vegan, basically. I was following that vegan couple. Then I started following Earthling Ed. And I think I started uh, discovering uh, vegan YouTubers like uh, Liv B, in the room and it helped me so much because first of all they knew so much about veganism second of all they had been vegan and they shared their experiences and their knowledge and that was super helpful knowing that there is someone who has gone through the journey and who can share their knowledge with me and inspire me and hold me accountable that was one of the main reasons i was looking up to these people and i was like okay i'm going vegan and they are counting on me. Like for a long time, it was about the animals for me, but without um, the activists and the influencers, it would have been that much harder to stick to veganism when I was doubting it, or maybe not doubting it, but when I was <sighs> considering all of the gray areas of veganism, or when I was just, um, when I had no idea what to cook for dinner, having them on my feed constantly helped me so much because I went vegan because of vegan activists. So I started my journey through following them and that's how I became vegan. So that is a tip that I highly recommend that you utilize and apply to your life. Tip number eight is maximize opportunities. I'm sorry for the cutting noises, <laughs> but I'm making myself dinner. Maximize opportunities. It is about prepping everyone for your veganism. Look, many vegans or many beginning vegans find it very difficult to go to social events or to go visit their family members or their friends because they know that there will be uh, or there won't be any vegan food for them. So they end up eating it out of politeness. Like, you know, someone cooked for you and you just eat it for politeness sake. Um, it doesn't have to be like that. You can maximize your opportunities uh, in the environments that you cannot control and be vegan. And this is how it works. Please, when you are invited somewhere, upfront tell them or ask them if they could cook vegan for you. It may be rude in your eyes at first, or it could be inconvenient for you. But let me tell you that it's probably not a problem <laughs> for anyone to cook something different for you if they really like you or love you or take care of you or care about you. It's something that shouldn't be a concern. If you have some dietary requirements or preferences, if someone truly cares about you, they will cook something for you. 
And the same for going out. If you are invited to a dinner and you are going to a restaurant, simply ask, are there any vegan options? If there aren't, you can ask maybe, it all depends on the situation, but you can ask if the cook, if the chef, if anyone there, if it's a fancy dinner for instance, if anyone could cook for you there. Or you can even suggest a different restaurant if it's not a big deal. And I know, again, that if people care about you, they will do that for you. So if you maximize the opportunities of eating vegan when you don't have control over it by asking people up front or suggesting vegan restaurants or places that offer vegan menus and vegan options, it will be so much easier. So this is my tip number eight, super, super important because it shouldn't be an excuse. If you care about going vegan and you want to stick to it, take care of it yourself and be consistent. Okay, I'm cutting some chives and I'm finishing my tip segment. So tip number nine and the final tip is to compare yourself to your non-vegan self. Here's what I mean. You are curious about veganism. There are going to be influencers and people who are already vegan in your life or online that you will see and that you will be maybe comparing yourself to. If someone has been vegan for longer than you and they are, you know, maybe they are athletic, maybe they are super healthy and you just replaced your regular unhealthy foods for unhealthy foods but in a vegan version, then you will probably start feeling like you are not doing enough or maybe you will start feeling really really bad about yourself and you will think, okay, I will never be like them so I will just give up because there is no point. This is wrong! You shouldn't think that and here's why. You are making changes in your life. It will take time to implement them. It took me five months since finding out about what veganism was and going 99% plant-based. After that, it took me almost a year to go fully vegan because I was eating non-vegan candy and it took me a year to finally cut it out from my diet. Dairy wasn't a problem, meat wasn't a problem, eggs weren't a problem, honey wasn't a problem, but store-bought candy was my weakness. And I was comparing myself to vegans and to people who were vegan and uh, they were advocating the plant-based lifestyle. And I was like, I know I will get there. But at the same time, I wasn't really um, justifying my actions. I was like, okay, I know that me eating non-vegan candy still causes um, harm to animals and harm to the environment. It was very, very hard for me <laughs> to break up with eating uh, non-vegan candy, but I was always comparing myself at the same time I was always comparing myself to the old me, to the me <laughs> that didn't know anything about veganism. And that's what you should do as well. Compare yourself to the old you, the you that didn't know anything about veganism and look how far you've come. You've almost gone vegan or you're a beginner at veganism and that's amazing. Truly, that's amazing. And you will get there. Remember, when you were not vegan, you made different choices. Now you know better, so make different choices now. Make better choices for yourself, for the animals, for the planet. Take your time, but don't be slow because you will benefit so much from going vegan finally. It's one of the best decisions that you will make in your life. I know that it's one of the best decisions that I've made in my life. So compare yourself to the old you and ask yourself, is this something that my non-vegan self would do or is this something that my vegan self would do? Go <laughs> with your vegan self. It's something that you want to do. You are watching this video. You've watched this video so far. It should be your number one priority. Okay, these were all the tips and I'm going to show you my dinner now. Yay! <laughs> I always do that, like, yay! <laughs> and here is my dinner. It's a combination of everything that we had left over in our fridge. So there are the udon noodles and chickpeas and bell pepper and carrots and chives and soy sauce. And it's super simple, super easy, super delicious. We found this combination yesterday by accident and it's just, oh, so delicious. Okay, I'm gonna finish my dinner now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed 
all of my tips. Let me know down in the comments which tip is going to be the most useful for you and what other tips we should share here under this video. So please share away, share your knowledge with us. And that is it from me. I'm going to finish and I'm gonna watch something and go to bed. <laughs> so that was my day today. I hope you gained some inspiration from it. Follow me on Instagram if you want to see more of my food and more of my daily life. And also subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this. And until next time, I am truly thankful for your being here. You have no idea. Maxia says bye. Bye. Mm. Bye. <laughs>